welcome to the channel. I'm Rob and today I have got a very special video for you where I'm going to take you through how to use Ammo Wargaming's Universe new uh, Weathering for Combat Army kit. So uh, Ammo were really kind enough to send me uh, one of their new kits that are dropping very soon. Um, and they wanted to see what I could do with the weathering kit. Uh, and I thought this would be a great opportunity uh, to do some weathering on some Death Guard because I've got, had a few dreads kind of laying around, not sure what to do with them. Uh, so I thought I'd put this kit through its paces by weathering up some Death Guard, which is a legion which is typically found uh, with dirty panelling. Uh, using that iconic uh, green uh, and cream uh, plate. Uh, but I really did want to see how uh, how kind of grimy uh, we could make these new uh, new heresy models with this brand new kit as well. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through kind of what's in the kit as well as uh, how to use uh, the, uh, the new kit as well. Um, I won't take you through every single step of how I painted the Dreadnoughts, this is just the, the, the broad brush strokes, uh, but it will give you a great rundown on the new, uh, the new kit, um, as well as maybe learning a few techniques as well about how you might be able to utilize some of the products together with it. So it comes in this very lovely box, um, and I think they've got four kits coming. Uh, I think the other three are, um, uh, are, kind of different elements of uh, wargaming, uh, basing and that sort of thing, but I got the uh, got set the combat armor kit. And this is how it comes. Uh, and it's got a lovely uh, kind of presentation book which goes through how to use, um, uh, use the kit. Uh, and this is what you'll get. This is kind of a great starter for um, how you'll go about um, kind of weathering if you've not bought one of these kits before. So it comes with some of the dry brush paints, the chipping dry brush paint, which is absolutely fantastic, is really nice uh, kind of uh, off brown, um, kind of this gray brown look, which is fantastic for chipping marble and chipping stone, but chipping armor as well. It comes with a um, gunmetal dry brush paint, which is fantastic. If you've seen any of these videos uh, before, you've seen me talk about those. Uh, it comes with uh, City Dark Dust, uh, which is, and that was the uh, weathering powder. It also comes with uh, this uh, scratches effect, which is gonna be really pivotal for kind of the early stages of our dreadnought use as well. It's gonna come with enamel thinner, uh, odorless thinner. Uh, you're gonna need that with, for everything that we're gonna do today. Uh, it comes with some uh, uh, engine grime as well as well as coming with streaking grime, that all important streaking grime that we're gonna absolutely douse our dreadnoughts in a little bit later. And it also comes with Starship Wash as well. Now, not everything I'm gonna use in this kit, for example, the Starship Wash that I, I don't in, don't end up using, uh, but it just goes to show you that this can be used on other projects as well. Uh, so fresh engine oil, this is gonna be really pivotal on any moving parts and metallic parts uh, to give that kind of multi-layer of weathering. Um, and that does dry glossy, so uh, that's a really, really cool effect. And the fact that it comes with the same brushes is, is even better. And then we've also got this uh, kind of rust, uh, streaking rust kind of brush. Now I usually uh, use uh, streaking uh, rust. You can see the one that I would usually use there. It's slightly darker, but I thought I'd give this one a go today. It's slightly lighter, more orange, uh, and the rust will be more visible. So I thought it would be perfect for uh, for Death Guard. But essentially, in the video, you'll see how I use it in the same kind of manner. Um, just one is in an enamel pot, and then uh, one is just kind of um, those easy to use kind of like brushes uh, that that Meg have designed, um, that Ammo's designed. So uh, yeah, and then along with that, they sent me some weathering powders as well. Now I'll use um, these weathering powders a little bit later in the end of the video, but this is the, um, the kind of like the first aid weathering powders uh, for kind of first aid vehicles during World War II. Uh, but I do use these a little bit later on um, uh, just to give them a well, just give them a try, um, as well as um, uh, pigment fixer as well. So they sent along those bits, and I thought I'd use them and show you how to um, uh, kind of apply weathering powders and and how to fix them as well. Um, but as well as that matching with the city dark dust that it comes with. But I wanted to take you through um, uh, the book and kind of give you a, a step by step upon the book, really, because I. 
um, if you're being introduced to kind of like heavy weathering that you saw on the images at the start of this video and you've not done anything like that before, I thought the book was a really useful and valuable tool um, in order to kind of unlock uh, unlock weathering. It, it really makes it kind of quite simple um, and you can follow the guide within the book in order to kind of paint the dreadnought how it how it kind of comes but what i thought was even more amazing was this introduction here where they had um your qr codes that would take you to videos um that would show you how to use these particular um these particular products now it might not be that particular product that comes in the box but it would show you how to use particular pigments or particular washes how to use thinner so these qr codes are really really valuable um and i thought a really clever kind of uh, clever aspect of the book if you want to know how to use a particular um a particular product in, in more detail and it also gives you a quick guide about thinning uh, enamels as well because um some people might be new to enamels, might be new to oils, those kinds of things, and, and how they work. And um, it, it gives you a really great in-depth guide in, in different languages as well. It also shows you how to clean your brush after using enamels as well. Now I have separate, um, separate brushes for, um, uh, separate brushes for uh, kind of oil work and enamel work. Um, and I recommend that you do too, but it does kind of show you how to take care of those brushes if you want to, uh, if you want to as well. Uh, one thing that kind of um, it does do is obviously links um, uh, kind of all these step-by-step -step processes, these initial kind of airbrushing processes and painting processes uh, to um, uh, products by by MIG, um, by Ammo, um, and uh, you can. Um, uh, you know get these but what's quite good about this book is that it says specifically whether or not a product comes in the box or it doesn't come in the box and I think that that was really useful so you know going through it actually I would need to purchase this this and this but I won't need to get this this and this right so it basically it comes down to paints paints are the things that it doesn't supply within the within the box but the weathering elements and the dry brush um, paints it it does it does supply um, and you can see there um, how we would go about using the chipping uh, dry brush paint there um, so it's not just necessarily for dry brushing you can also use it for sponging on as well and you can you apply that technique to much of the um, uh, much of the um, uh, dry brush paints as well which is that you know the silver bright dry brush paints can just literally be um, sponged on and, and because of the way they are they're quite thick they've got a, a bit of bite about them as well um i'm just kind of showing you a, a fan brush here you've seen that in previous videos you can use smaller brushes as well as well as the brushes that um the the kind of like the, the brush that it the um the the oil brushes come with but that fun fan brush that i use that small one is a really really valuable tool so um, worth investing in something similar or a wedge brush or something like that because it will help you to uh, create that kind of like that streaking effect that's often seen with scale modeling and um certainly i just briefly go through how to show you how to create those um uh, those elements of um, streaking within the video uh, really clever clever kind of use of scratching effects and then um, the uh, engine grime as well which I hadn't seen before um, and I probably I didn't use on this video um, but I would definitely use in the future which is overlaying kind of scratching effects and then um, overlaying that with engine grime and then uh, using water to kind of scratch it away, which I thought was a, a really clever idea to give age and uh, age and weathering to metallics, which I hadn't seen previously. Um, so I thought that was a really, yeah, really clever idea. Uh, fresh engine oil, so you can see there how we go about using it. Any moving parts, you're going to want to use a French a fresh engine oil on. We don't often consider that when we look at the Games Workshop kind of paint jobs and every metal paint jobs. There might be one or two oil streaks going. Um, uh, down elements of a of a particular model you know i can imagine lehman russes have those but the a product that creates a really kind of glossy effect around um uh, kind of joints and um 
areas that might leak or areas that have to move. So I'm thinking particularly with contemptors and dreadnoughts, they have a lot of kind of ball sockets on them. All those places would obviously be um, have kind of engine oil on them to simulate the the, the lubricant that goes around those uh, those those things. So a really awesome kind of product to use. So we're going to use some uh, scratches effects now. You can see that the the models initially have been given a uh, brown um, undercoat, um, and I've just sprayed orange here and there in patches. You know, there was no skill involved in it. It was completely rushed, um, and uh, the more splattery the paint, the better. Uh, but once you've glossed um, and protected that layer of brown and oranges, you can then apply your scratches effects. Now, your scratches effects can go straight down. You don't need to thin the scratches effects um, at all. It can just go straight through the airbrush, which is absolutely fine. You, you know, don't worry about thinning it. Um, but keep the layers relatively quite thin. One thin layer is absolutely enough when using uh, the scratching effects. And once you've done one thin layer, just move on to the next thing. I found that it took, and this is just me airbrushing it here, um, and uh, just one thin layer, absolutely fine, don't need more than that. I found that it took about 15, 20 minutes to dry. Um, and I think like with all things, it probably does have a, a working time. If I'm doing this kind of process, I would kind of give myself an hour afterwards to make sure that I get all the scratches done. So make sure you have plenty of time. I wouldn't kind of put this on apply your layer and then come back to it in the next morning i would do it all in one kind of airbrushing airbrushing session and one kind of weathering uh, weathering session as well and as you can see i just um apply a thin layer over the whole thing and then move on i'd be really cautious about applying a thick layer that often um, can cause issues when um approaching your um when approaching kind of the 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 weathering and the scratching when you start applying um, start applying uh, water so a couple of um, a couple of things here that you might need when doing your weathering because we want to create kind of realistic scratches uh, we've got a scalpel we've got a brush that I've just kind of clipped the end off and then we've got a um, a, a mascara kind of brush I guess you'd call it um, something you apply mascara with and you can see here kind of I've just used uh, an off white over the entire thing. So I think what's important here with the Death Guard in particular is that you you don't need high contrast on the panels. The 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 interest will come with just the weathering. So we've just used a flat off white just to to cover the entire model here, whether you use it from a rattle can or whether you use it uh, through the airbrush. With a rattle can, it's much harder to get off and you can see me here just chipping away and picking away uh, after I've applied some water. So the water reacts to, reactivates the, um, the chipping fluid underneath. Um, and it, you know, but I have used a rattle can here, so it's quite persistent, but the, 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 um, the blade, the hobby knife, is absolutely fantastic uh, to scratch away at um, kind of realistic places where there would be kind of uh, scratches and things like that. You can just start to see and control the scratches as well, you know, and all the edges. We won't edge highlight this at all. In fact, the edges, that's where we will focus our scratching around. You can see our Leviathan Dreadnought here. Um, I've got a little bit further. You can see where the scratching is, has happened. But I have sprayed this with water through the airbrush as well just to reactivate it. You, I, because I've used an undercoat, because I've used a sorry a rattle can to do this, you can be you know, quite firm with it. If you use the airbrush to apply your paints, then it, it will come away uh, come away quicker. So I've been quite rough with this, um, which is absolutely fine. Uh, the gloss layer has protected the brown underneath it. I'm just doing the kind of like the last elements of the um, of the scratching here, but I've really focused on the edges with a few scratches here and there, and those larger scratches on flat panels uh, will be places that I will draw streaks down from as well. So I'm thinking ahead already about kind of where will I want streaks coming down uh, my um, my model. But yeah, really focus on the edges of our um, of our of our models, um, and that goes for infantry as well as. Um, uh, kind of bigger models as well. Now you can see here, 
um, I've applied the green, and uh, but I've applied the green through the airbrush. Now, the, what you find is anything that you apply through the airbrush will come away much quicker um, and much easier than if you do it with a rattle can. So you can just do your scratches, your faint scratches there, but just make sure as you come away, you're not pressing too firm uh, when you kind of do this process and apply this process. And you can start to see here, I've reactivated it with water and I'm just putting some uh, scratches on any stripes, uh, any stripes as well here. But as I said before, be super careful with this because it can come away really, really easily. So kind of less is more. Don't think that you need lots of loads and loads and loads of scratches when you do this, uh, because it'll be, uh, you know, as you, as you go through, uh, we do different layers of, uh, different layers of weathering. We'll also need to put transfers over this uh, a little bit later, and then we'll also scratch up those transfers um, in order to just kind of harmonize it all together. Because what you don't want is a, a brand new flat transfer over the top of that, uh, where you are essentially um, left with just a, a nice transfer on the uh, nice transfer on the top of it. And it's up to you which transfers that you use. I found that the um, the the forge world transfers that they create are particularly uh, particularly good. But the newer games workshop ones are are also uh, fantastic as well. Right. So now, once you've applied your transfers, and you can see, I've done lots of videos about kind of transfers and how to apply them. There's loads out there as well. But I'm more interested in using this kind of weathering kit because we've only really used the um, uh, the the scratches effect so far. What we want to do once we've glossed it up is use our um, streaking grime. Now I've mixed the streaking grime with a bit of uh, odorless thinner that it that the kit comes with, and what you can start to see is I'm very carefully pin washing it. Now you could slather this all over if you want to, um, and certainly there are areas where I go over the edges so that you could see there. Um, however. Um, what I would say is it's probably better to be more careful and then wiping away any excess uh, with the, where you kind of go over it. Now, what you can see here is the contemptor when it's all done and finished. You can see the scratches on it. You can see where we've used the engine grime, uh, sorry, the uh, streaking grime. And then you can see where I've done streaks coming down as well. And I've simply just damped a blob of streaking grime on where a scratch would be and then drawn that brush downwards and that creates that really cool uh, kind of like weathering weathering effect. Now it's a, a technique that you've seen me do before. If you've not seen it or you want to see how to do it, I'd recommend you go have a look at my Imperial Fist Contemptor video um, because I kind of go through and show you that there. But you can see the kind of like the white color and then the moment that we've got the um, uh, streaking grime on, pin washed as well it started to uh, modulate the color of that panel it's up to you whether you completely slather it and then wipe it away or you be a bit more careful with it uh, but a lot of the modulation has actually just come from drawing that brush downwards uh, using that streaking grime you can see here we've got our kind of contemptor now I've matte sprayed the panels and then I've applied the metallics now the metallics is just a, a, a a silver you know a dark silver but I have added a little bit of brown into it just to start that process of um, creating kind of like that rusty metallic look that we're going to kind of reinforce with our with our um, with our enamels a little bit later but I recommend if you want to do a death guard silver I'd recommend just a, a darkish silver combined with uh, a dark brown I think um, and it, it kind of holds to the model quite well it has some bite um, but it creates kind of a lovely kind of starting to be corroded uh, metal and you can see here kind of I've got to that stage on every single dreadnought where I've just blocked in the uh, blocked in the uh, silvers here as well um, and then next up we are going to be using the um, the uh, the dry brush paints now the dry brush paints the reason why I like them in particular is because um, they dry 
in a non-chalky way. They maintain lots of their luster and uh, their metallic look. Whereas if you dry brush um, many paints, you know, Games Workshop paints or scale paints or you know Vallejo paints, I find that they dry quite chalky, and that's not what we want ideally from a metallic dry brush paint. Whereas the ammo paints I found do dry. Um, uh, without that chalky effect. Now this first one that we're going to use is gunmetal um, and this is great in the tool of any kind of painter's arsenal really but it does come with the kit this one and we're just this is going to be our kind of our first layer of uh, dry brushing and we're just going to catch the edges on um, uh, on this and as I say this is going to be our first layer and um, all we're doing is just a really rough highlight we haven't even washed the metallics uh, we don't need to worry about that because of the enamels that will come a little bit later we're just dry brushing them just picking out all the kind of like the key areas um, uh, that, that you would expect and it's, it really is as simple as that um, uh, try and get smaller dry brush paints for this you can see I've got kind of a range of different ones here, but small ones and larger ones as well. Um, but the ammo dry brush paints are, you know, fantastic. Now, what I would say um, about this is that you probably can't see much of kind of a difference between that very dark metallic that I put down as well as the gun metal. That's absolutely fine because remember we're doing layers of weathering and layers of weathering and you know building up these building these up as we go. There is a there is a slight change within it, um, but not a huge amount. I think particularly this is good on tank tracks uh, if you've got kind of very dark black or brown tank tracks um, uh, that paint. But what I do use is a is a dry brush paint that doesn't necessarily come with a box but is worth I think investing as well I use this one kind of almost on every project which is the light metal uh, version um, and that will create a really cool effect with those kind of together um, but it is it dries really really bright but it has lots of that kind of luster to it so you know pick, get a hold of this because it's an absolutely fantastic um, fantastic uh, dry brush paint and just picking out all the kind of like the key elements there and you can see that really kind of uh, brings the luster back to the uh, brings the luster back to the metallics but we are going to kind of completely get rid of that because we're going to absolutely douse it in rust effects in a in a moment but as i say it's a brilliant um brilliant paint these these two uh, gun metal and the light metal are really worth investing in if you uh, if you don't have them Partly because of the fact they just don't dry chalky. I'm sure you've all been there where you've had dry brush paints. You dry brush something silver and it just ends up chalky. It's just not very nice, I don't think. Whereas these are absolutely fantastic. You can see the contrast that we've got between the metallics and the, the flat white plates as well. And we talk about contrast when we think about like the side of tanks and those sorts of things. But contrast can come through textures. So uh, our rust effects. Now, our streaking brusher. Now, I would like to use this as... Uh, a bit of a um, a bit of a a wash rather than kind of a kind of put using the brusher. So what I've done is I've used the odorless thinner that comes with the um, comes with the the box, and I've used the uh, just poured some of the rust effects, uh, the streaking rust effects into the pot. Just mixed it up. You could see how um, kind of thin that was. And essentially, we're going to use this as a wash. Now, you might be alarmed at the fact that the um, the the panels are so kind of dirty and matte, and then we've got these metallics which are so bright. Well, don't worry, because the rust effects dries matte, and it will knock all the metallics, uh, knock all the metallics back, and start to make them rusty as well. So wherever we have got metallics, uh, we can um, uh, we can just apply this. You can see I'm being quite sloppy with this, and that's absolutely fine as well. If you think about the rust that comes from oxidized metal, and then that being hit by um, uh, rain. Uh, and snow and those sorts of things, it will cause rust to go over particular areas and, as well. So I would say that you, you don't need to kind of be very precise with this. If it runs and pulls into areas of our white, that's absolutely okay. As long as it doesn't go kind of, you don't go too mad with it and not over kind of entire flat panels. But there are places, uh, you know, rivets and things. You might want to pick out a few rivets where you use this kind of rust effect because that layer of that streaking grime combined with the rust effects creates some really cool kind of 
weathering over the, the the quite boring kind of white plates so yeah as you can see i just put it all over the metallic areas just using it as a wash and it will dry matte and that really will be enough for the kind of most of the metallics although we will use some engine oil um, on kind of any any moving parts now the um the engine oil this engine oil is is great because it dries glossy so again when we talk about contrast within miniatures we don't just need to think about kind of like the contrast in terms of color we can talk about the contrast in terms of texture as i was saying before and this is a great example of where we got contrast in texture so we've got the flat mat of the panels combined with the very glossy um, engine oil that kind of shows that lubricant around ball joints and things like that so anywhere where you think that there will be moving parts anywhere where there's a ball joint anywhere that there might be lubricant anywhere that there might be areas that um, might have engine oil kind of seeping out of it that is a great place to use this and you can see using the brusher that it comes with uh, this just goes into all the kind of like the key areas it just really nicely kind of slides into those areas uh, so it's an absolutely fantastic product i should keep it on my right hand side rather than kind of crossing over so you see my arm all the time but yeah you can see here on the ball joints uh no that's a great place to use this here so you've got the kind of that shiny slash matte from the rusted metals but then any areas i've used this on grates and things like that as well you know i just thought that you know engine oil might be pouring out of it um particularly at the kind of like the bottom of it you could use this down the panels as well but i think just as we've done here it just you know a precise application i think is better and as i say this comes with the kit um so you know absolutely fantastic for doing joints on marines or doing um uh kind of uh joints on on dreadnoughts as well so yeah most of the things i think all the things that we've used so far except for the light silver has actually just been in the kit so here we've got our we've got our earth um kind of oil brusher here now um i wanted to this to be a bit thinner it is quite thick that you can see how kind of thick it is um and we'll use that we'll use that thickness a little bit later but i'm just mixing it with a bit of odorless uh, thinner that comes with the kit and then i'm just dropping this around the feet area here and remember when dust and mud dries it dries really light so it's really good i think to have light um oils around this around feet going into all the cracks and crevices because dust and dirt dries much lighter uh, than you would expect this is our first kind of layer of that weathering uh from its surroundings that we'll do we will use uh, some weathering powders a little bit later but we're also going to use this earth oil brusher in a slightly different way that you might not expect um, as well which is that we're going to get the airbrush out uh, in a moment and we're going to create spatters of earth as well but this is a really cool technique you can use this on um, uh, your basic marines and infantry uh, and i would really advise this over just caking the feet in weathering powder which can be really an unpredictable process this dry will dry matte and it will go into the recesses which kind of simulates the dust and the dirt building up in the recesses as well so do this rather than just smashing in weathering powders into the feet of your models because sometimes that can look a bit unusual. Uh, we're going to take our oil brusher here uh, just straight out the pot and then we're going to use our airbrush just blowing uh, clean just clean air nothing in the airbrush just air through it and that will create quite cool spatters on our the bottom of the feet of our dreadnought as well now it is pale that's absolutely fine but remember this whole process the thing about weathering armor has to be that you've got layers upon layers upon layers upon layers one layer isn't enough with weathering you've got to have you know three four five layers of weathering to to simulate how it would be realistic so what this does is just smashes our um our kind of dust and dirt into the feet splatters of where perhaps it was wet earth that splattered up onto the feet uh, splatters of dust and that sort of thing and a very very simple uh, simple process i you could do this with a toothpick um and and this brush as well if you don't have access to an airbrush or worse comes to worse you could just simply do this using um 
there you go, you just blow onto it. And we're going to use some uh, weathering powders here. Now, I've got a range of weathering powders. Now, it does obviously come with um, uh, City Dark Dust, which I will use, but I'm going to try out some other weathering powders as well. And all we need to do here for our weathering powder is we need to um, uh, just smash, essentially, and this is the first one, City Dark Dust, I just smash it right into the base, like so. And next up, we're going to have a look at the base. So, um, as I said before, me um, uh, Ammo sent me um, a range of weathering powders to try out, but I will be using the one that comes uh, with the kit to start off with, which is called City Dark Dust. So that's the first one. It's a very, very dark weathering powder. Now, in terms of this base here, um, I, I just gave it kind of like a greeny grey, um, kind of look to it and then I followed that up by um, uh, kind of just giving it a dry brush uh, with a with a light grey by um, by ammo um, and then I am all I'm doing is I'm just taking a taking a brush and I'm just smushing it into the into the base that is that is literally all I'm doing but I would really advise you to avoid tr the feet as much as you can now some inevitably will get onto the feet but I would really try and avoid uh, try and avoid it um, as much as you can as I say and then as we work through um, uh, the the dreadnoughts what you'll see is that I'm going to go to a lighter weathering powder and then to a lighter weathering powder now the aim with this is to create kind of tonal variation within the um, uh, within the base and um, and as a result we need to use lighter weathering powders as we go up now I'm going to use dark earth but I'm not going to use as much dark earth as I did the city dark earth um, and then from there it will get kind of lighter and we'll use the next uh, next one up Weathering powders can be a bit of a mystery, but I think that um, uh, the simplest thing is just to use a, a pigment fixer at the end, which is what we will uh, what we will do, which will help them to stay on the model. But they've got a lovely matte feel to them, and you can see with the lightest weathering powder here, what I just do is I just knock it onto the uh, knock it onto the base, and this is the kind of what I would do for every single weathering powder, which is just that I would choose three, work my way up through, and with the last one, just gently sprinkle it onto the base, and that just gives tonal variation uh, within your uh, within your base. And then what you need to do is use pigment fixer. So ammo, use pigment fixer, um, uh, or uh, have pigment fixer, and um, this will keep your pigments fixed to the base. And it's really important to, to do this, otherwise you'll get uh, pigment absolutely everywhere which is what you don't want. And it, I, the best way to describe it is just kind of almost acts like a like a glue really for the base and you just pop this onto the base, let it spread and then let it dry. It does take some time to dry. You can hit it with a um, with a hairbrush, a hairbrush, a hairdryer, um, but... So that kind of... Is it really, in a nutshell, I've used most of the products uh, from the kit, not every single one, I would probably use them in on uh, future products, but it, it, I found that it was a great kit if you were getting into uh, kind of weathering for the first time. Certainly the book I think is a fantastic addition and that really helps explain, uh, explain an awful lot about um, kind of weathering and how to do weathering and I think the QR codes linking back to the videos um, is absolutely brilliant. I think that's kind of a, an inspired piece of, um, uh, inspired for um, uh, kind of those who are just looking to get into weathering. If you're more into advanced weathering, you might already have many of the products kind of that I've shown you, but I actually didn't, and I weather tanks all the time. Like the, there were a number of products there that I didn't already own. Um, so it's now great to kind of have my my hands on those really. But if you want to create dreadnoughts that look exactly like this, if you want to weather your Horus Heresy uh, Warhammer models or create a grimdark style, I'd uh, recommend getting hold of the kit when it drops. I don't think it's out uh, out just yet, but hopefully. Um, 
it's giving you a few ideas about how to use the, the kit. And if you don't plan to pick up the kit, uh, but you do use some of our most products, hopefully it's given you a new way to how to approach certain things like weathering the metallics and using engine oil around um, kind of those moving parts. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful. It was a long one, but hopefully it was a detailed one and I shall see you on the next one.